Hi guys, Andy here. Now, I've reviewed a few different dash cams over the last few months. I'm trying to find one now for my car, one that I'm happy with. Um, and I've not, there's some, been some good ones, but um, then I saw, basically when, in my searching, I saw a different style. Um, so it wasn't actually this one. We'll come to what it is in a moment. Um, it's a pretty huge box. You know, those are my hands look barely covering. So <laughs> the box is ridiculously big compared to other dash cams I've had. Um, you can see obviously on the bottom there is the features. Uh, this this feature I'd been looking for for quite some time. Full HD 1080p. Got a few more icons up here, look. I'm sure that makes a lot of sense. Then some of the important stuff on the back there, which you want to read as well. Um, let's go ahead and open it up. Thank you for your purchase. Okay. iSmartOutdoorsCo.com Limited. Ah, and there she's blaming. Crikey, it's a big. So, as you can see, it's basically an, a new rear view mirror for the car. That is huge. Hmm. Worries me a little bit. But it's not just a new rear view mirror, obviously. It's got the dash cam built in. I assume from that it's got eight gig of built-in storage. We can, that, that doesn't feel so good if I'm honest. There's a little bit of movement, but not a lot. So let's hope that, in fact, your mirror is gonna be angled slightly. So that's a little bit of a concern right off the bat. And if your mirror's angled for you to be able to see out the back mirror, doesn't to me look like you can turn the camera enough. We'll see, we'll see, to have it pointing forward still. So on the top there, we've got a headphone jack, first of all, then a slot for the uh, micro SD card, an AV in, and a mini USB power in. We have some uh, control buttons along the bottom there, can you see them? Uh, power. Um, something up, down, and an OK. A couple of holes that might be for microphones. Now, I've just noticed that says step two. Can you read that? Step two, please peel off this mask after application completed. What was step one? So I'm guessing, actually, they've put a... They've put, like, a screen protector over the mirror. And they've done step one, which was basically stick it on, and we do step two. Well, I won't do it just now, so there's no need. So, let's pop that aside. That is huge, though. That worries me <laughs> Worries me a little bit. Um, in the box, what have we got? Okay. Ah, right. So, that's a rear view camera. But I've got one camera, one plug. And I guess that's for power. Oh, that's going to go into, at a guess, like you're reversing light, so it knows. No, hang on there, because then when, yeah, cause that's, so that's, oh, okay. So let's, let's make some more guesses. What do I have at the top there? A, AV in, plugs your camera in. That's the power, goes to your reversing light. So as you put it into reverse, the camera, oh, actually, I don't know if I can see that before. I can see that now. Can you see the square? Those are the corners just there I've got my fingers on. So that's where the, the digital display screen is going to come up. Um, okay, so the... So I'm going to... Oh. I mean, you don't have to have that installed, I suppose, but I'm going to have to get a professional to... I did kind of want a reversing camera, actually. I think that's why I picked... I picked and ordered this three weeks ago before I went on holiday, so I kind of forgot about it, to be honest. <laughs> and the come home and here it is. Woo! -hoo. Right, there's obviously our power goes into... That's pretty big and chunky, that... Uh, Connector. GPS unit. Okay, now I'm a bit confused. Do I get a choice of one or the other? Is there a separate... I mean, it's a bit annoying. Something that big needs a separate GPS module, but... And then that looks like a regular... Regular power. Sticky pad... Maybe that's just an extra sticky pad for GPS unit, maybe. So, I won't 
bore you while I have a read through how it all works and stuff. But uh, what we'll do, obviously, I'll get it installed in the car. Um, I'll use it for a little bit of time. And then uh, we'll come back via the magic of editing. In only a few seconds, we'll come back and I'll carry on this review. So installing it in the car was very simple. Bearing in mind, I didn't do the reversing camera. which you just sort of strap it onto your existing rear view mirror as I have and actually you know as a rear view mirror it's pretty good I mean it is a big rear view mirror but that also that's that's not a bad thing it does give you better visibility out of the back it's a nice long power cable so I run mine all the way underneath the, the right hand side uh, dash up the edge it needs to be tied up a little bit there but up the side of the windscreen all the way along the top and then obviously it comes back out to plug into the top of the uh, the mirror. You can see there the size difference between the original and the large. And there were a couple of times I kind of I found myself having to dock a little bit to see under the mirror. Also, it's a bit weird. They've done the camera itself in silver, so I think that's a little bit visible, more than I like. And the big 8G sticker and the one next to it, obviously I moved those. I've sort of relocated those. They're out of sight, hidden behind the uh, original mirror now. Now I've installed it fully. So uh, the mirror itself, yep, no real issues, all good and proper. So because I've got it wired to a port, uh, a plug that just comes on with the ignition, as I turn the ignition, obviously it then turns itself on. Now I've edited out exactly 30 seconds there, so it's not the quickest. It's still booting up at this point. And we'll see the, uh, that's the home screen that uh, it meets you gives you access to pretty much everything you should need really the navigation the camera the clock doesn't do anything i found out so i tap the one thing that doesn't actually do anything music you can put music on an sd card that goes into the thing but then i couldn't see there's no bluetooth one of the negatives of this is there is no bluetooth so you can't connect it to your stereo there's not even like a headphone out so you can't even run it through to an aux port so unless you want the music coming out of the poor speakers built into this mirror it's not actually that useful now by tapping system you can see we get into the actual sort of home screen as we would expect it i thought oh play store but of course actually i tried to install so that was me trying to install the play store and i couldn't get it to work even when i had my wi-fi connection but there is all sorts of if you were out and about and you need to know what two times nine was that can be calculated uh every now and then that process a core crashed but only when i was doing things like back in the system area like this which really basically it's not designed for so part of me thought yeah android android on my wing mirror fantastic but actually it might as well be some kind of proprietary uh, operating system really because you couldn't do too much android based now you see here the blue one that's where the reversing camera would be if you had one and actually that'd be quite quite cool kind of handy um, or just you know the rear view camera for that matter um, we can start and stop the video independently. As you see here, there are some settings. Look, so we can change the quality if we wanted. We'll come to the actual quality shortly, but you can change it to 720p and such if you so desired. Uh, there's a few other settings you can see there. Generally, I didn't muck with them too much. I left it on 1080p. So that's the uh, sound oven. Again, we get to the system here if we wish. Have a look here. Let's find the uh, the camera the camera will focus for me we will see that we're running Android 4.0.4 .4. there we go it's focused finally thank you I have no idea what that model number is at the top look but so as I say really you don't want to worry too much about it being Android it's not as beneficial I did get the Amazon underground installed um, though you'll be able to install bits and pieces I managed to install Waze but it didn't particularly work as I would have wanted Waze itself to work. Now, so you can see there, you can turn it on and off, so it can be just a regular mirror, um, or your sort of your oh, bit of a false positive on the press there. If you tap home, it gives you this home rather than your system home, which makes sense. That's fine, because like I said, that's the one really you should be using. So you can even you can open a browser if you wanted to um, use your phone. You could uh, connect your your rear view mirror to the internet and browse the internet. On your review mirror as you do and to me that, that surely that's extra geek points isn't it I think there has to be extra geek points to be able to browse anyway so let's show you the sort of the sat nav we're open up it's basically it's iGo is the software 
and again it's it's quite slow to uh, to start you see you can move the that's your record button obviously i've just moved out of the way there i'm going to cut 20 seconds out here and then finally it sort of loads up um but then again at this point it was uh the screen's actually quite responsive i didn't expect it to be as good as it is the actual touch screen so we're looking in we're going to look for a pos so these sometimes like this is a little bit slow and it calls them gas stations, not petrol stations. But we'll look for a gas station, and there are there are my local petrol stations listed. So, right, let's uh, choose Esso, a mile and a half away. And again, a little bit slow. So, it's okay, right, I think this is the one you're looking for. And you wait a little bit, and the thing's still spinning. I think in the end, I got a bit bored of waiting and just tapped next. And actually, it said, all right, what do you want to do? I said a final destination, please. And there you go, it plans you the route. I think I actually just planned it via somewhere else, anyway. But anyway, there you go. Uh, easy enough to do, I mean, not the quickest. I should point out, you can see the cable, you can definitely see the cable there going off with the, the GPS uh, module kind of sat on my, uh, on, the, on the sill there under the window. Um, but it seemed pretty accurate. I mean, that's one of the advantages of having a separate GPS module, I suppose, it's, it's accurate. Obviously, looking like it does there it's quite messy and if i was gonna if i'm gonna keep this as a permanent thing i would i would wire it in properly around the edge uh, and just have it on the corner of the window there but uh, yeah i mean the sat nav it seemed pretty good i mean generally i just use my phone for sat nav so i'm not sure how much use i would have for this and you could also argue oh that's dangerous you can't see properly out of the back mirror but then at the back window sorry but then lots of people drive around and you can turn it off like so if you need to be able to watch what's going on but you know van drivers can't see anything off their rear view mirror it's not that dangerous i don't think you're still here with wing mirrors um and obviously yeah so this is it just turn off and it's acting as a regular mirror no problems there it will still you if you're running sat nav it will still give you, give you the voice commands even with the screen off um, it's also quite handy that you can review instantly the uh, footage recorded by the dash cam so if you were in an accident you could actually pull your pull your mirror off and go out and say well look this is this is what happened look and obviously, because basically it's like an Android phone or a tablet, it's much easier to control than a lot of dash cams because you can literally just skip into where you want to skip into. And actually, the footage on the small screen looks really quite impressive. Um, it's, again, you know, it's quite responsive to the touch. You can, we can jump about. There's lots of little blank ones. I think it makes, I don't know if they're supposed to be little thumbnails or something. They're not. That's what there's a lot of those little blue ones that we you don't really see the preview. But yeah, I mean, it looks, when you look at it, the quality looks really quite fantastic. Um, but we'll uh, we'll move on to quality and have a look at some of the actual footage. So we we'll start off with pretty much the best conditions you could hope for, really. Well, this time of year, anyway, in, in London, um, it's a nice, bright, sunny day. Me driving home, steady, slow, <laughs> very slow pace. Um, and I don't know, on the one hand, you look at it and think, well, that's not too bad. Look at that. The sky looks quite, quite clear. You know, you can see, make out, oh, it goes a bit brighter at one point there. But, you know, a lot of cameras struggle when there's a bright sky. They can't really uh, get the balance correct and the rest of the picture's too dark. But actually, it does quite a good job, I think. But as you look ahead at that car in front, I can't really see, um, I couldn't make out his registration plate, for example. And if you look at the trees driving by, you also notice there that it kind of looks quite a bit blocky and a bit, patchy and just not as good as you would hope from from a good dash cam um and let's move on now to the uh not so good conditions so it's a bit wet a bit of rain it's a little bit darker and again it's, it's it didn't look too bad but again you couldn't you struggle to make out registration plates of vehicles passing the other way or even perhaps some of those that i'm going by um so I mean, it's I don't know. It's good enough that if somebody pulled out on you and you went smashing into the side of them, and they were claiming it was it was your fault or whatever, that actually you can clearly see what's happened. Is there's not a problem in that respect, um, but it's just it's not good enough if someone reversed into you and then sped off. You, I'm not sure I'd want to be relying on this to to get the registration plate. So. I don't know. I guess. I guess. Well, uh, what I will do, we'll leave the uh, we'll leave the footage playing while I just sort of summarise my thoughts on on this as a dash cam. 
So I, it's annoying there's no Bluetooth or even for that matter sort of sound out. So you can't, because it would be quite cool if you could stick a load of music on your SD card, put it into the mirror and then Bluetooth connect that or cable connect that to your car stereo and you could control it from the mirror. Um, I'm not sure actually it's that much better than having the music in your stereo, but it gets you nerd points basically if you're controlling music from your mirror. Um, definitely add Bluetooth, it just makes it maybe a little bit easier for some things. Uh, it's a little bit annoying that there's a separate GPS unit. So again, something this size, surely they could have built GPS into it somehow. You know, if the screen and the and the main gubbins are over on the left of it, why couldn't the GPS have been on the right? Um, yeah, so uh, it is a huge big screen, which I think it goes down as a negative. I mean, part of me says, well, that's a that's a positive because it's, it's it does give you such great rear view, um, you know, ang uh, angles or just visibility out the back, basically. Uh, the camera quality is probably my biggest concern. If it had, if it had, uh, I kind of think if it had better quality, I'd be more inclined to to use this as my dash cam. But as it is, I feel oh, I want to get myself a better a better quality dash cam to just for that reassurance that um, that you're going to have capture everything that you need to capture. You could also say it's a big a bit of a negative that you can't install the Play Store and the, you know you can't install. You know, it's not like it's Android. You just have to just take it as it is, really, for to get what you want. Uh, on the positive side, though, is I think it's a very cheap way to get a reversing camera. Um, so if you don't have one, you know, if you've got an older car, this is I think it's quite a cheap way to get a reversing camera. The screen is actually responsive and it's it's you know it performs relatively well for what it is. I think um, you also get reasonable battery life, so you could actually use it for about probably an hour, an hour and a half without the car being on or plugged in or anything. So again, if you had to take it somewhere to show somebody, it's got enough battery to do that. And that's with the screen on, you know, screen on time of over an hour. I've had it sat here now for in front of me while I'm recording this for an hour and it's still on 37% and that's with the screen on that whole time. Um, and also then the sat nav. So it's a bit annoying that it's a separate GPS, but you do at least always have sat nav. So you've never got any concern of having problems with your phone or anything like that and being worried about getting places because you've always have it built into your rear view mirror. So all in all, is it worth the buy? Oh, that's really hard to say. So, I mean, I've spent, I think it was about 85, 87 pounds on it. Definitely you get nerd points. So definitely it's the kind of thing that if people say, oh my God, that's so cool. But in actuality... Yeah, you might use a SanAv, but actually I prefer Google Maps because it gives me uh, the traffic updates. Um, the mu Installing music does you no good because you can't connect it to anything. Um, and the camera, I mean, it's good to know it's, it's basically it's always there because I would just leave that plugged in on the, in the car um, so that when you start up, it's going to be recording. So it's good to know that that's, that's there, but I just I would worry a little bit about the quality. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm still undecided. Part of me says try and sell it on and get a proper dash cam, and part of me says no. It's quite cool having all these little extra features, especially the reversing camera. I would quite like. So part of me says pay somebody to properly install that, and uh, and it's quite a decent setup. I don't know. You let me know your thoughts, and uh, I'll drop a link to the one that I bought on eBay. It's a D901, I believe. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it and your thoughts on the quality. And is that a big problem, or do you think just it's good enough, just that you can really kind of you can tell what's going on? There you go. So my name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.